One of the stories that's getting some traction is this idea that new legislation will not be made, will not be created to help crack down on controversial leasehold deals. Speaking at the Housing Communities and Local Government Committee, Housing Minister Heather Wheeler dismissed claims of mis-selling toxic leasehold deals and said fresh legislation would trigger a horrendously expensive wave of compensation claims. Instead, the government will focus on relying on developers and property companies voluntarily giving families better terms. Well, into this conversation, we can bring Louisa Reardon, who's from Dunstable. Uh, she's one of our panellists, of course. And Louise is part of the National Leasehold Campaign after having her own problems with lease, a leasehold property. Louise, very good afternoon to you. Hi, Roberto. Louise, before we get into the, the, the main thrust of this story, just remind listeners of what happened to you and your property. Yes, um, in September 2016, we bought a house locally. It was a new build um, we used help to buy. That house was a leasehold house, um, which we didn't understand, but uh, we were told reasons why. Uh, it turns out that this house should never have been a leasehold, and with it has, well, it's just brought so many problems and so many stresses for us, to be honest. What's been the cost to you financially? Because you, you are now, you're living in that property still, I think. Yes, we live in the property still. Um, so when we found out that the house was was not owned by the people we thought it was, or the land, sorry, um, we then exposed the company that sold us the house in the media. Um, at that point, they decided to offer us a freehold of the house. Um, so we we you know we purchased the freehold. It cost us several thousand pounds. Um, the plus to that is that they obviously didn't sell it on to an investor, meaning it probably would have cost us, you know, tens of thousands. Um, but the downside to that is that we really don't have a freehold property. We now have a fleece hold. So we don't pay ground rent, basically. That's the only thing that's changed. But we still have all of these onerous clauses and terms that are similar okay. to that of a rental property. Just, just we make can't it, do anything freely. Just make it clear for everyone, Louise. So the house itself, the structure of the house, you own that. That, 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 that property is, is yours? Not really, no. No, we don't even own the bricks and mortar. Um, so we don't own the land while it's a leasehold. And we could lose our house at any time. So we have estate fees that we have to pay. If we were to default at any time, then we could lose the house. So, no, it's not really ours to freely live in at all. We don't own it properly at all. If you wanted to sell it, could you sell it freely or do you have to go back to the leaseholders? We have to ask permission um, for certain things if we want to try and sell it. Um, we have to pay for permission for some of those things as well. Um, we, I don't think we can sell it. If I'm honest, um, the, the 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 clauses that we have here are so onerous that I don't think anybody would want to buy it. Particularly when they do ban leasehold houses moving forward. Those of us that are stuck with, you know, these uh, fleetold houses probably won't be able to sell them. That that seems to be the direction of movement here. Going forward, the government will crack down on these things, but but looking back retrospectively, it seems there's not a lot they can do. And the Housing Minister, Heather Wheeler, has dismissed claims of mis-selling toxic leasehold deals and said it would be horrendously expensive to try and recoup this. Well, I think there's a big difference between being able to do something and not wanting to do something. Um, you know, they can resolve this issue. The, um, the house builders have made a lot of money selling these properties to us. They're ill-gotten gains and, you know, they can hand back those ill-gotten gains to their victims, i.e. us. So there is a way to, to, to write this. Um, and in terms of expense, I mean, expense for who? Yeah, again, you the know, state. the developers have profited. Or, or the well, state. The state again, hang on, but Louise, what, what, are the, what are the, really, what are the more, more poignant comments that Heather Wheeler, the housing minister, has, has made today is that and she's refused to crack down on toxic contracts, and she's blamed buyers for being too excited to read the small print properly. It's just crazy that she's obviously not well informed about the situation, which is a real disappointment for the rest of us, because we thought government, with all of the consultations they've had us take part in, that they might have got a handle on what's really happening. She clearly doesn't seem to know. Um, you know, th there is a mis-selling element here. My house was mis-sold to me for certain, and, you know, there are thousands, if not millions, in the same position. Uh, so, yeah, you know, if I was mis a poster, I, 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 I could listen, turn it. Uh, Louise, I, anyone listening will understand entirely why you might say that but 
shouldn't you have had you, you and all the other people involved in this campaign shouldn't you've got your own solicitor to check the paperwork well we had a solicitor of course but was it your solicitor or was it theirs Actually, I was one of the ones on my state that used the bank solicitor. So, you know, I was, I was, I tried to be careful, but they didn't highlight anything. They didn't highlight that the ground rent on this property would increase. They didn't highlight any of the onerous clauses, permission clauses. Nothing was highlighted to us. So it didn't matter if I used the developer's lawyer or the bank's lawyer. Those issues weren't highlighted. So, yes, of course, the conveyancers have a part to play in this. But the conveyancer wasn't there at the beginning of the process when I sat in the sales office reserving a property that they told me was a leasehold because somebody else owned the land. Now, that was an outright lie. So that's not a so lawyer where, could not. OK, where, does, about where does the campaign go for here? It's part, yeah, part of the national leasehold campaign, Louise, where, because the government are not going to go not going to go retrospective and and try and clear up this mess because it, it's, it's horrendously expensive. They say is the next process is, is the next part of the process to seek legal redress against the conveyances and the solicitors who perhaps may not have been as clear as they could have been. I think that's all part of the ongoing aim anyway. You know, everybody has a part to play in this. Every agency uh, has a responsibility and they need to be brought to account for that. So even if, you know, the issue is resolved with the house builders, there is still, you know, there's still uh, items to address with conveyances. Um, but it's the house builders that need to sort it out. And it's government that have allowed this to happen. So government needs to take the lead on that. They need to make sure that the industry is regulated moving forward to protect people like us. Um, that's government's job is to protect the people of the country. But you weren't, they no, no one was forced into a contract to buy a house, were they, with these developers? Well, we were forced into a position where we needed a house. We needed a house because the rental properties are either too expensive or yeah, we, we all, we all are need unfair. someone to live. The, the problem is going to be, Louise, the argument is going to be that we all need and, and, uh, tr a tremendous sympathy will be for you and all the other people, of course. The thousands of you are caught up in this, but the argument is going to be, as the housing minister has said, should have read the small print. Well, the, what is the small print? You know, a lawyer is there to read that. But then you talk about, you know, what was advertised. My house was advertised. Help to buy. Help to buy a home. You know, I thought I was buying and owning a home. I don't own it. So there's another miscellaneous element. You know, and that's, that's partly help to buy as thought as well as the developer and their advertising material. So whatever way you look at it, we didn't buy what we thought we were buying. And, you know, they can try and say that we should have read the small print, but the large print, also showed that we were buying something different to what we ended up with. Louise, wish you all good luck. Uh, Louise O'Reardon from Dunstable, one Thank of our panellists, of course, part of the National Leasehold Campaign. There is this uh, scandal that has been brewing for a number of years now, and it seems the Housing Minister has said, the Housing Minister is Heather Wheeler, and she has dismissed today claims of mis-selling toxic leasehold deals and said fresh legislation would trigger a horrendously expensive wave of compensation claims. The housing minister says she's blamed the buyers for being, as she puts it, too excited to read the small print properly. Is it always a case of buyer beware?